If you want your walk through Hyrule in Zelda Tears of the Kingdom to be sweating, learn these tips and tricks that we're going to teach you in this video. Hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you won't miss our next videos. And now, we're going to tell you 15 tips and tricks for Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Want to get some height to soar through the air but don't know how? We're sure many of you are missing the Revali Champion's power that allowed us to create updrafts in Breath of the Wild. But don't worry, because we can replace it with a pinecone. Hylian pinecones are a new item in Tears of the Kingdom, and watch out for them because even though they're everywhere, you shouldn't underestimate them. If you place a pile of wood and hit a flint, a bonfire will form. But if you add a high roll pinecone to it, you'll create a powerful updraft that'll send you soaring through the air. Until we find Hetsu and have enough Korok seeds, we won't be able to store many weapons in our inventory. In the meantime, we recommend that you merge the shields and swords you get and can't save with other items in your inventory. This way, you'll have a double shield, a double sword, a sword shield, or even a shield sword. If you find gloom weapons that take life from you when you use them, just fuse them with another weapon to use it as a handle so you don't suffer this weird effect. And this has nothing to do with this trick, but if you fuse a shield, with a wagon, you can ride it as if you're Tony Hawk himself. Locating all the hidden shrines of the map can be a difficult task, but there is a trick to find them. In the underground of Hyrule, there are light routes that illuminate our surroundings. But what you may not know is that these routes connect directly to the shrines on the surface. So if you see one of these routes, it probably has a shrine right above it. And thereby, if you find a shrine, it probably has a route underneath. Oh, and as a bonus, the shrines in the route below them have the same name, but reversed. Link's new arm powers are very practical, but they're even more useful if we combine them. Specifically, recall together with the Ultra Hand. If we grab an object with the Ultra Hand and create a trajectory, we can reverse it using recall. This is very useful for getting up to some ledges or for moving heavy objects from one place to another. Note that this trick does break some puzzles in the game, so use it at your own risk. We mentioned the underground earlier, and moving around in the depths of Hyrule can be quite claustrophobic. So to light the way, you can simply throw bright bloom seeds with your bow, or leave them on the ground and hit them if you don't have any arrows, as well as throwing them, but there are more ways to avoid getting lost in the dark. You can create recipes that'll make you glow like a glowworm for a few minutes. For example, combining bright costs with meat, or deep fireflies with monster parts. Depending on the monster part you use, the elixir will be more or less powerful. Another option would be to combine a star fragment with a magic rod. This will temporarily create sparks of light that will travel in the direction you point. Finally, there is the miner's armor, which can be found in three different chests throughout the underground. The first time you visit an inn, you'll be given a guild points card. This reward system will add points every time you visit a new inn or rest at one of them. Accumulated points will allow us to register more horses, get a towing harness to attach carts to our mount, and even use the Melania bed, which will reveal things about the oracle that revives and improves horse stats. One more thing, if Tears of the Kingdom detects your Breath of the Wild safe game, you will be able to use any horse you have registered from the first game, including Zelda's and Ganon horses. Sneak strikes are a mechanic that already appeared in Breath of the Wild and are useful for doing a lot of damage to enemies. Using a stake row, a combination of an arrow and some meat, we can distract our victim while sneaking up to blow a powerful sneak strike. Stake rows can also be used to guide enemies into deadly traps where they'll meet a terrible fate. If there's a particular enemy you would like to farm items from, they will reappear after each blood moon. The same goes for weapons in Hyrule Castle as well as some chests that'll reappear after this event. Zelda's more of a cooking game than a fighting game, so you better become a true chef if you want to succeed in Hyrule and stop cooking shit. There are three cooking rules in Tears of the Kingdom. First, do not mix food with things that aren't food. If you mix meat with a monster part, fail. If you mix an insect with a fruit, fail. Remember, edible things with edible things. Bugs, amphibians, and monster parts are useful for elixirs. Second rule, combine compatible items. If we want to get more speed, put fast things 
things together to create a recipe that boosts the effect. And don't mix fast things with hard things because the final result will be neutral. And now the final rule, be creative. Many of the things you find around Hyrule can be cooked, from herbs to nuts, but in the shops there are also other ingredients such as flour, eggs, or rice, which allow you to make much more elegant and elaborate recipes. Who doesn't like a super Hyrule omelet? As an extra tip from master chefs or alchemists, if you create an elixir using monster parts and add monster essence, it'll make the effect to last a random amount of time that can go up to half an hour. Rods are very interesting weapons because they allow us to attach elemental items to them to attack with ice, fire, water, and electricity. But this weapon hides a very interesting secret. If we fuse rods with minerals such as ruby, sapphire, opal, or topaz, we will obtain the same elemental powers but enhanced. We highly recommend the sapphire rod which creates a huge blizzard that'll freeze numerous enemies that we can push from cliffs. It is also very useful for knocking apples off trees, making them easier to collect. Now, if by any chance you have fused a diamond or any other valuable item, but you regret it, don't worry, there is a way to avoid losing it. In Tari Town, there's a small Goron who will separate two items for only 20 rupees. This is a real bargain when it comes to retrieving high-value minerals or dragon parts. Once we receive Pura's tablet, you may notice that many features on the Sheikah slate are missing. These include the camera, the Sheikah sensor, the hero's path, and the teleport. These are all very interesting features and we recommend getting them as soon as possible. For the camera, simply complete the first underground mission given to you by Robbie and his assistant. If we continue to explore the underground as they indicate, we can get the auto build in the great abandoned central mine. This allows us to automatically create things we have done before or new ones through predefined blueprints. Be careful though because you don't need to have the materials nearby to create them. Your machine can bring it together out of nowhere as long as you have enough zone to do so. For the rest of the features, Robbie has to travel to Hateno and once there, we can visit him to get the rest of the upgrades. We can get up to three teleports and leave them anywhere on the map to go wherever we want. The Hero's Path will help us to know which places we haven't visited yet. As for the Shrine and Item Sensor, we just have to to complete the tasks he gives us to add them to the device so we can locate items such as treasures or certain ingredients. We know that flying a wing can be quite tricky depending on the surface you are. An easy and safe way to launch a wing is using the Ultra Hand and Recall we mentioned before. First, as we raise the wing as high as possible, then we put it on our side and activate Recall on it. As we climb up, we'll gain altitude and start gliding straight away without any problems. This not only saves us a lot of trouble, but also allows us to gain a little more height from the surface we are going to launch it. If you want to lift or raise a heavy object into the air, it's important to take into account the power of the Ultra Hand. Any item you select with it will lose all its weight, making it very light. That's ideal for lifting very heavy things into the air without the weight affecting the structures we've created. Therefore, if you're thinking of attaching something to a structure, try to always carry it with the Ultra Hand as it'll be much easier to lift. All the shrines in the game hide a treasure inside. They are usually more difficult to obtain, and once opened, it'll be marked next to the name of the shrine. A similar thing happens with caves. There's a hidden booble in each of them, and it'll give you a booble gem that you can use in Kilton's brother's shop to get monster masks. The thing is that when you capture the ghost, a tick will appear next to the cave, indicating it has been explored. If you want to know which caves you have yet to explore, just go to Satori Mountain and offer an apple to the Lord of the Mountain who will then temporarily mark the caves where there is still a booble with a beam of blue light. There are more places like this, so just keep a lookout for the huge pink cherry trees. We also recommend that you look out for the Hudson construction signs, which will give you rupees and new recipes when you place them. In Hyrule's Underground, there are posts to collect, which can then be exchanged for interesting materials and clothing. The wells scattered all over the map, which sometimes hide clues and treasures. And last but not least, the dreaded Korok seeds. To expand the inventory and store more bows, shields, and swords. 
Whistling's a good way of getting your horse back to you in an instant, wherever you are, more or less, but it's also useful for getting the attention of your companions. Whistling at characters like Sedan will make them come to your side to activate their special ability. This is actually important because sometimes they'll get stuck and a little attention will bring them back to your side. Looting shrines is a little trick we have to save on materials and zonai cores. For example, if you find a shrine with a lot of rockets, you can fuse them to your shields to take them out and use them outside. By the way, each gachapon machine gives different materials depending on its location. You can check them on the main map, they're marked as a blue ball. Do you know any other tricks or tips to play Zelda Tears of the Kingdom like a pro? Subscribe to the channel and don't miss the rest of our Nintendo videos. See you next time!